Hey guys, Sepco Psych Repair. Today I'm working on an Apollo. This is an RFZ125. So some of you guys might have these. They're pretty cheap. They're about a thousand bucks to buy these. They are, you know, a little bit different. There's some of the, the issue and the reason I really don't like working on these is because it's hard to get parts for. Um, they're pretty decent machines if you're gonna, you know, give it to your kid to learn how to ride and stuff. But so like for instance right here, this one's been sitting, it needs a carb clean. The carb has those tamper proof screws on it so I'm going to show you guys how to get those off uh, it needs a couple of the parts for this bike which I'm having a hard time finding but uh, let's get this carb off and cleaned it's pretty simple it's got a regular um, clamp on air filter here pod filter it'll come right off it has the top cap okay for the um, throttle slide that's going to unscrew and come off and then we have two 10 millimeters here okay right there and there we're going to take those off on both sides and then when we get that off, we'll be able to take the whole carburetor off and get it cleaned up. Another thing on these bikes that really bothers me is how hard the rubber gets and stuff. I mean, it gets really old quick. It just doesn't last. Like right now, this clamp is loose, but this rubber does not want to come off. It's just dry. And for these bolts, these two bolts here, it's an 8 millimeter and then a 10 on the back. Go around the other side. Pretty simple carb to remove. This top cap sometimes is like cross threaded or it has a pin. All right, so there's a pin right here. We can see that that locks it in place so that you can't remove it. So I'm going to try to grab that so that I can take this cap off. I'm just grabbing it with a needle nose and unscrewing it. coming out. Alright, so it's a little tiny locking pin. And that makes it so you can't take the top off. So now I can unscrew this top cap and pull the carburetor out. Now here's our uh, fuel line. Let's get the fuel line off of it and then we'll bring the carburetor over to the carb studio so we can get it cleaned up and I can show you how to take this bowl off. The bowl has um, tamper-proof screws on it. All right, right like that. They're just kind of flat. So we're going to have to cut those. There's only three of them on there. So I'm going to take the Dremel right here and we're just going to cut a couple slots. Okay, just like that. Try to get everything solid. I got this holding down, this on the ground. Just kind of working in there and getting them. Just like that. All the way down to the flat washer part of it. That's what you want to do nice and deep so you don't have a problem getting them out. Let's get a screwdriver. All right, guys, so I got a flathead. Make sure the flathead you're using fits good. These are not in there tight, so you can, or can you reuse them? Or you can just change them out with a regular Phillips head. But having that big flathead in there makes it easy to uh, remove and re reuse. Sometimes they're a little odd sizes. So remember after you grind them down here and we open this up, make sure you clean the whole thing really good because there's going to be some metal uh, dust and stuff on it. from what we just did. This also has the tamper-proof um, mixture screw in here. All 
There we go. All right, and there's our problem. So we're going to get it all cleaned up. Now the jets are regular, like standard kind of jets, emulsion tube, uh, main jet, pilot jet. They're just dirty and nasty in here. So we're going to spray all the stuff out of there. Make sure this gasket right here, guys, take this thing out. Put it in a safe place so it doesn't get any carb cleaner on it. So it stays the st or standard size or else it's going to want to grow on you and you'll never get it back together again. Unless you let it sit overnight, chill it. So I'm just going to pull it out of here. Now let me show you something inside these carburetors and this is what the difference is. Now you can't, you can buy these carburetors if they're available. This particular model it's not because it shows no longer available. But look at this here. See if you can get a good light on that. Okay, this is parts of the carburetor garbage in here. You now it's just all pieces of built up fuel and paint coming off of the carbs. So we got to clean these up really good. Let's get all these jets out of here. Look at that. That's why you got to pull the emulsion tube out. A green and nasty. Everything. Look at all those holes. All those holes are clogged. It's never going to run like that. Pilot. And this one wasn't even getting fuel inside of it because the needle stuck. I don't know if you can see that in there, but... If you look at the needle, it's not even moving. So we have to get that out and clean that out. So to do that, we got to get this um, float pin out right here. The pivot pin goes straight through here. So we're going to try to get that out of there. Okay, you saw it move a little bit. Okay, take our floats out. Now what you're going to see here is that this is, see look, the floats are still hooked on here because the float needle's stuck. So we're going to try to gently, if that doesn't pull out, don't go crazy, don't start yanking on it. I'm going to drop the whole thing into the cleaner and then uh, we'll, hopefully that will come loose. Usually the uh, pine sole cleaner that I use will just loosen everything up. I'm going to drop it straight in there like this and let it just really soak. Let's get this uh, mixture screw out. This O-ring, the ceiling O-ring, I'm going to take that out of there. Then this mixture screw, I'm going to drill a little hole in there, use a, um, a self-tapping screw, screw it in a little bit, and we're going to pull it right out. All right, so after you battle that for a little while and you get it off, this one was just jammed in there, but I got it. So you're going to take this off here. This is your mixture screw. Underneath that, is a spring. There's also a washer and an o-ring in there. Okay, we're going to leave those in there. I'm just going to spray into that with carb cleaner and uh, they're stuck in there right now. So what I'm going to do is put this back in when I drop it into the cleaner. I'm going to let it clean for a little bit and then I'll spray everything and then take it out. And it should come out then. But if you have a hard time getting that out, you don't want to start digging in there because you'll just mess up the o-ring. There it is, it's warming up now. All right, let's pull the stuff out of there. It's been in there for about 25 minutes. Look, everything is loosened up and it's coming right off now. Look at that. All right. Let's pull the jets out, see how they look. Pretty hot.
remember, it's not the outside we need to clean, it's the inside. So I'm going to use a small wire. A little small wire here. And we're going to send it through all the small holes in the emulsion tube. Make sure they're clear because that's what helps the fuel atomize when it's going through the carburetor. And if it doesn't atomize properly, it'll act like it's running rich because it'll be just dumping fuel and it won't be, um, you know, misting it in there. Carburetor companies spend a lot of money trying to figure out the perfect way to atomize fuel. So we can't ignore it when we're cleaning these carburetors out. Now you can pull this off of here. It just screws in. It'll be fine. Okay, that's looking good. This is the important one right here, okay? This is your pilot jet. This is what gets clogged up real easily. And this is what's going to screw up with your slow speed running, starting, idling, doesn't run uh, without choke on. It's this one right here. This is the pilot. Make sure you get this one clean. Make sure you can see light through it. Same thing, using the wire, the uh, little piece of wire, put it through there. Some of these holes are really small. You don't want to make it bigger. If the wire doesn't fit through, this one just fits through here. Don't jam it through. Try to use compressed air. But make sure when you're done that you can see light through it and you don't see any debris in there. Now we're going to get the uh, carburetor out. I'm going to <clears throat> make sure Okay, so we got we're good there. See that? I'm going to spray this down a little bit, try to cool it down. If you leave it in there too long, it's going to start to oxidize and turn black, so don't leave it in there forever. Good 20, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Let's see if this is going to come free. And it's still stuck in there. See that? So let's shoot some carb cleaner into the intake where the fuel comes in. Let that sit for a second. Patience, don't force anything. All right, so I flex this a little bit, the springs, so I can get the float out of the way, so I can grab it. Now I can grab it and just kind of work it and turn it and twist it. And there it comes, look. So now we got to make sure it doesn't stick again. Best bet would be buy a new one. But like I said, I can't get parts for this one at the moment. So let's clean this all up. And even though it's an imitation, you know, key in carburetor or whatever, when you try to get parts for it, a lot of times the key in parts don't fit. So you're kind of guessing. All right, good with that. Now for in here, it looks like it was stuck on the sides, just kind of gummed up um, fuel on the side here on the ribs. So we're going to go ahead and get a uh, Q-tip. We're going to clean everything up in there really good. I'm using some fine, this is just um, fine valve compound. Much better. All right, so the mixture screw, remember that one there? We're going to take that out, and I'm just going to blow some uh, cleaner through that one. 
I'm going to leave the o-ring and everything in there so we don't have any problems with that. And I'm going to set it to two turns when I'm done. So unscrew it, take the spring out. Okay, and then there we have the, you can see the washer. And there's an o-ring beneath that, but we're going to leave that in. Again, hard to get parts for this carburetor, so we're just going to try to not disturb it any more than we need to. You can see spraying here our pilot. The pilot works with the mixture, so you when I spray it into the pilot, you'll see it come out of the coming out of the hole for the mixture screw, okay? Spring back in. The mixture screw, just make sure you clean this tip. Turn it all the way in until it gently seats, and then two turns out for this one. put our car back together again nice not gonna stick anymore right there all right so our float pivot pin let's put that back in check the float height that will work just fine all right so let's get our Pilot jet back in. Our main jet and emulsion tube. A bowl in our gasket. Because we took it off and didn't touch it, okay, it didn't swell up or anything, so it's good to go. We're going to reuse the screws that we took out that we ground the little flatheads in. I'm going to tighten these up, throw it back on the bike, turn the fuel on. We'll see if it starts. This was a no run. I've already changed the fuel. I dumped all the fuel out. And there's fresh fuel in the uh, gas. So the first thing you want to do when you get these is always dump the gasoline out of the carburetor. It's got a flathead screw at the bottom of it. And you can just drain that out. And a lot of times, it's just the fuel that's in the bowl. See, the fuel will sit in this bowl, and the vent lines and stuff will let it go bad quicker than what's in the tank. So you just, unloosen, you just loosen this screw. And that will dump the fuel out of there. Turn your fresh fuel on, let it flow through a little bit, and then you're golden. Hopefully. I fixed a couple like that, but not in this case, so. All right, let's go put it back on. Don't forget this needle right here. See, that's all green. We're going to clean that up too before we put it back together again. And make sure your slide's nice and clean. All right, guys, before you do anything, okay, and get frustrated, remember I told you. Because you can drain this bowl out. So we got a flathead screw right there. We're going to loosen that. Yep, and we got fuel flowing out. So now we know we got fuel going to the carburetor. A lot of people overlook that and they'll kick it a hundred times. So let's give it a kick and see if it starts. Always make sure your throttle's working before you do anything. Full snap spec. All right, let's see what we got. Bear to kick.
good. Even the kill switch works. Alright guys, so that's it. The owner of this one wanted to make sure it was running. I told him, listen, before we put any money into it, let's make sure it's running. But uh, before we do, because it needs a couple more parts. Like this front axle that was swapped out by somebody else. This is not the original one. So the whole thing moves back and forth. I can't get to do it with one hand. The lever, not really in there. The front brake, caliper's missing. So with those parts in there, this will be a you know just a fun pit bike to ride around. So, so I'm going to get those parts ordered up now that it's running. And it uh, should be good to go. Hopefully I won't have too much trouble getting these parts. We'll see. About to find out. I'll put a link in the description where I'm getting the parts from, so maybe it'll help you out. But I had to search for the parts uh, numbers and then and then use the part numbers in a different website to find the parts. It wasn't very easy. I wish that part of it was easier, but oh well, what it is. The parts are really not that expensive, so we'll see. Guys, hopefully you like this video. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for further notifications, guys. Until next time, this is Tepco Cycle Repair.